up guys i'm queenie and welcome to wow queenie weave a channel where we like to be ahead of the game with our timely product reviews <laughs> i know this product came out a little over two months ago and it's kind of late for a review but maybe there's people still out there that are on the fence picking her up or not and maybe this video will help you make a more informed consumer decision and today's product review is Makoto Nijima or Queen from Persona 5 The Royal 1 8 scale by Mega House. One of my goals this year is to actually have a video under 15 minutes. <laughs> so I went ahead and pre filled some stuff, but we're going to go over everything from the price to the box, the blister, to the actual product, all that, all that fun product review mumbo jumbo. But without further ado, Let's get into it. Wee. I don't know why I got up as if I was leaving, but I'm just going to continue sitting here. Please like, comment, and subscribe for quality content. Uh -huh. All right, first things first, the pricing. Makoto was purchased from AmiAmi of the affordable price of 15,000 yen, meaning she was a little under 150 USD. I had mentioned in my 2021 pre-orders video that I was not sure if I wanted to pick her up considering my holy grail was the Amakuni one, but homegirl is like $500. We, <sighs> it's okay to let your dreams die sometimes, it's fine. All right, let's get into the product design. The box. You cannot convince me otherwise that this is not one of the sickest product boxes. Oh my God. So much thought and detail went into this design of the box. It really looks like it was lifted right out of the game. And it's so cool that you can see the little official Atlas sticker on the top there. I mean, you have great views of the figure all the way around. And a little something something that I thought was super cute. I mean, it's not, it's not a big deal, but it's a small little touch that's appreciated is the underside here, you can see Makoto there on the under flap, which I don't think I've ever seen that before in a figure box. And as much as I love this box, but the first con that we have for this figure is while all the promotional images are absolutely gorgeous, they are a bit misleading. So stick around because we will get into that in a second. All right opening the box from the bottom because we're sneaky sneaky. Her blister slides out very easily. And I have to say that it's a pretty good blister. Thankfully, it wasn't too hard to open and the figure looked very well protected. She comes with a base, which I like to call Mecha House is trying. It's not an extravagant base, but I do appreciate the calligraphy of Queen with the printed chains as well as the color. And she was very easy to pop on there, no issues. Plus, she is very sturdy when she's popped on her base. Right out of the box, she comes with her unmasked face as well as hands on hip and holding the gem torso. It's not my favorite torso, but I mean, right out of the box, it looks pretty good. Makoto comes with a few interchangeable pieces, eight total. That is two torsos, one pair of legs, one face sculpt, two fringes, including the Phantom Thief mask, one scarf, and her base. To swap the pieces is very easy. It's a smooth transition with no gaps in between. If you want her wearing her Phantom Thief mask, it's very easy. You just pop off her fringe and then replace it with a Phantom Thief and fringe piece. There's no satisfying clicking noise, but it is safely secured on there. To change torsos is also a very easy process. You just pull up the head along with the scarf with medium pressure and then pull up the torso, which I did have to put a little bit more pressure, but it did pop off, thankfully. And then you interchange it with the other torso piece. Once again, just pushing down with medium pressure and it should snap into place. And 
and she also stands at a height of nearly 9 inches, which is pretty good for a 1 8 by Mega House. Okay, let's get a closer look at the fine details of Miss Makoto, which will lead us to the cons and pros section of the video, which I want to start with cons so we can end on a positive note and hopefully enter the new year with some good vibes, right? Some good vibes. New year, new bitch. Okay, the first con of this figure. She is insanely light. Like, it took me by surprise because I don't necessarily believe you need to have like heavy figures, but I have this pop-up parade here that I got a few weeks ago, Dark Magician Girl from Yu-Gi-Oh! and this full 1-8 scale figure. The pop-up parade is much heavier than this Makoto figure. All right, second con, her scarf. I think the sculpt and the pose of the scarf is incredibly dynamic and interesting, but unfortunately the plastic is so brittle. Oh my goodness. Um, if you accidentally stepped on it, I think it's over for it. It's gone, it's gonna be broken. And I don't know nothing about like figure engineering. Is that a thing? Because if they had used a different type of plastic, would it have maybe drooped? I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. People love to tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> please, please boost up engagement by telling me how wrong I am about that. Con number three. Remember how I said the pictures on the box can be misleading? Well, comparing the images on the box to the figure, you start to notice that some things are a little bit amiss, especially with her physique. Which, it's kind of evident. It's like an elephant in the room, or I should say bulge in the room. Oh my. Yeah, homegirl's packing heat. <laughs> and listen, I am no vagine hater. Like, they come in all beautiful shapes and sizes. But listen, I have free figures, swimming male figures, and she is packing way more heat than they ever could. <laughs> oh my God. All right, we're done with the negativity and the tomfoolery. Let's go into the positives of this figure. Pro number one, accurate face sculpt. Her eye shape and eye color are beautifully done and incredibly accurate. I love the individually sculpted strands of her hair. It looks great. I love her beautiful mouth sculpt as well as the lip gloss color. And she has a fantastic nose sculpt. Like it looks great from the side as well as a frontal view. Pro number two, her Phantom Thief mask. The proportions of the mask look really great against her face, plus it fits so well that there's no gaps between the mask and the sculpt. And the size of the eye holes look really good. You can see her eyes underneath very well. Pro number three are the two torso options. I would say one is not better than the other in terms of quality and paintwork, especially the front lacing up detail in the front of the torso. Like that is so crisp. Although, I do favor the torso that has her metal brass knuckles because those brass knuckles, y'all, they are so sharp and make her look even more badass than she already is. Four is her fabulous vacuum sealed booty. Rest assured, she has as much volume in the back as she does in the front. I mean, that booty is glossy. Numbers five and six are paint and sculpt work which I think go hand in hand. There's more of a matte paint finish on the black parts with black shading to make it pop, as well as a more glossy finish for the blue armored pieces, as well as the blue parts on her suit, and a really nice metallic finish for all the studs and armor pieces. It wasn't until I had this figure in my hand that I realized all the intricate details as well as ergonomic seam lines that were in her cat suit. I think Mega House did a great job utilizing all the different paint finishes so you can see all the details. There's beautifully sculpted fabric creases as well as fabric folds on her joints, which really gives the look of someone wearing like a latex cat suit in mid motion. 
I also noticed at the lack of evident or prominent mold or seam line on the figure, especially at the side seams. Plus the mold work on her armor is super sharp as well as her hair. It's just, there's no dull points on the mold. I do think the figure looks great from all angles. Unfortunately, the bulge is kind of a bit more prominent in a frontal view. So I remedy that by just doing the slightest of three quarters. Whew. Cons and pros are finally over, so do I recommend this figure? And y'all, I just do not know. I really do think Mega House has been stepping up their game in terms of quality and paint work with their figures, although I think that she is a bit overpriced and it is unfortunate with the whole bulge situation. I would just say, buy what makes you happy. But if you can buy it for retail or under retail, I would say go for it. You should not be paying over retail or aftermarket prices for this figure. But once again, I am very tired of hearing the sound of my own voice. I really hope that this video helped you guys make a more informed consumer decision, even though that this figure has kind of been on the market for a little bit, but she's, she's still there. She's still, you can still grab her. <laughs> anyway, you guys, thank you so much for joining me on this weird journey and, he, and if you made it this far thank you once again all my socials will be linked down below i would really appreciate it if you guys can help me out by liking by commenting and especially by subscribing my next video should probably be my pre-orders for 2022 as well as a haul right after that so there's definitely content to look forward to i hope you all have a wonderful rest of your week and until we meet again goodbye I don't mean to start a war, but personally, I think Makoto is best girl. Ooh, 10,000 dislikes. <laughs> oh, fucking shit. World's longest toilet flush. That's what I get for needing to pee. Mm.